Welcome to the fastest off in town. Today we're in Masechtas Boba Kama, Daf Peches. We're going to begin on Peches Amadal by the two dots at the top. So the Mishnah said on the previous Daf on Pe Zion that if you hit an Ebed Ivri, you're Chayab to pay for everything except for the Sheves in the event that that Ebed is yours because the fact that he's not working, that's on you that you hit him. But then, when it comes to an Evid Kanaini, in which an Evid Kanaini is a different level of ownership that the master actually owns, so therefore, if it's that you hit someone else's, then you have to pay for everything. However, for some reason, Rabbi Huda Eimer ain't love on says this is not true. When it comes to an Evid Kanaini, there's no din boishas. So on this, the Gemar asks the following question, my time Rabbi Huda. Why does Rabbi Huda say this? So, why is there no din boishas? So, I'm recording because the Pasuk says as follows in the Varm. You have two people that are quarreling with one another. So, what do we derive from here? Why does that mention the case of, of, of your, your achav, your brother? It, must, it doesn't mean literally your biological brother, but it means someone who is like your brother in mitzvahs. So it's coming to exclude an Evid in which there's no element of Achva, which may not just be referring to, to um, brotherhood as far as like doing mitzvahs, but also has an el- element of Yichos. Rashi says over here, um, actually, t- let's look at Toysus over here first. Toysus says, Perish ein lots of Korean Achim. Those that come from them are not considered to be among their brethren. Mashain Kane Bagar, Byitz Michalatza of Raitza Ratsa Hakuntras Lafarish. Okay. Um and on the side it says Valpha Bishop Kuntras Parish Ainu Achva Shemutter Bachisai. Um Vaishis Achiv. They're allowed to marry their sister. That's what it means. They're allowed to they're allowed to marry siblings. Okay. So I entice this. Regardless, so he says that the whole this whole parsha and this parsha talks about Baishis is excluding an Evid Kanaini. Rabbanan Achav Huba Mitzvahs. Rabbanan say, no, no, no. Achav, it means he's an Achav regarding doing mitzvahs, says Rashi. And we know, Kol Mitzvah Sheisha Chayevesma, Evid Chayeba, the Gamal Isha. An Evid Ivri is a Jew, but an Evid Kanaini also is Mukhayev to do mitzvahs Keisha. And we went out, we went that out from Xer Shava. So therefore, the truth is, it's not true. When we learn out the word Achav, it's not coming to say it's excluding the Evid Kanaini because he doesn't have Achva. No, he does have Achva because he does mitzvahs. He is Mechoyev to do mitzvahs. He may not be Mechoyev to do mitzvahs like a man, but he's Mechoyev mitzvahs ke'isha. El miyato, Rabbi Huda, zaymi Evid lo yiharogu. So according to the opinion of Rabbi Huda, um, in which there's no din boishas, if let's say you have zaymi Evid, these witnesses should not be killed. Why not? Says... Because uh, the Pesach says, It also says the word Achiv over there. Says Rashi, We have witnesses that are Chayim Misas Beistin, that, that they're trying to have someone else to be killed by court, rather. And that first group were found to be Zaymimin. According to Yishit Zerbi Huda, They shouldn't be killed. Um, when it comes to, again, if they're trying to get this person killed, Alma so Alama came on the Eved Kisrael in the Misas Basin. Did not mistake the Smachas. We saw like with Goyal Ali the Eved. It does say that there's a din. Um, the, the punishments are the same when it comes to an Eved Kanaini. Well, her it shouldn't be because it says Achiv, according to the Sheet of Rabbi Yehuda. So Marava Omer of Sheisha Summer Kra of Yarta Ramikir Bechem Mikol Makoim. So when it comes to Boishes, we have a Miut. However, over here, when it comes to sentencing someone to death, so in that situation, it's uviarta haramikir becha. And therefore, we want to be able to get rid of evil from our midst. And therefore, because of that, that would include a an, an evid kanaini who was engaged in something which would be a misas based in. So, al miyat al rabbanan evid yehi koshul malchus. an evid should be able to um, be a melech. Because again, the Pusik, which we don't see it over here yet, um, we find that it says that you have to be a Checha, 
We're going to get to that. But so, but the rabbanon hold he's achecha b'mitzvos. So that means you're going to tell me that an evid kenani could be a, a, a melech. So Amri so l'tamech tikshulach ger l'diber kol. You're going to ask the same question when it comes to a ger, in which Rashi says shli dasu v'haroisu b'kedusha that afilu uh, Rabbi Yehuda yeshul achva uposel malchus. It doesn't matter. He's going to be posel malchus. Afilu shait der ba'alma elinkin ima misrael. It has to be that his mother's Jewish, and if he wasn't. He wasn't. Uh, his mother wasn't Jewish, and he converts. He can be the greatest tzaddik. He can be uh, greater than the Kohen Gadol, but he's not allowed, as we'll see in a second, to be able to take upon the position of Malchus. So El Omer Kra Mikir Vachecha Mimemuvchor Shivachecha. So therefore, it's based on that pasuk. Therefore, it tells you, as we understand, Lediver Koil, that a ger cannot be a melech. And therefore, for that same logic, even though maybe the Rabbanon hold that a checha is typically something which could include an Evid Kanani, but not over here by a melech. Again, according to the Rabbanon, he feels that the word achiv is included, inclusive when it comes to an Evid Kanani. But there, we should therefore say that he should be kashul edus, and we know that an evid kanaini cannot um, be an aid. So amr ula edus lo matzasar. No, one second. When it comes to testimony, you can't go there because as edus bekal v'chaymer miisha. Because you can learn out from a woman. Ma isha she ruyu lava bekahal. Of course, a woman is allowed to marry into klal, klal Hashem, bar Hashem, or else we know more Jews, right? Obviously, she's allowed to marry a, a yid, uh, a Jewish man. So psul edus. But a woman is posel uh, leedos, so evid she ain't a royal level but kalani there didn't she posel leedos. So certainly uh, an evid kanani who cannot come to kal Hashem certainly is going to be posel leedos. So Rashi says posel leedos. The chesiv gabi edim zaymin the amdu shnei anoshim. It says that the two men stood, and it's brought down in uh, Shvuos, quoting Rashi and Daf Lamed. The edim zaymin a kasma daber the mashma anoshim lo anoshim. So it's a dra- it's a exerse of that only men and not women. Katanami mahachanaf go on, and we actually learn out the same thing from Katanim cannot be witnesses because there's nashim lo Katanim. But oh, the edus shiata yachal hazimahi the law bar oinshin who certainly uh, when it comes to a katan because they're not a bar oinshin you can't allow them to testify because even if they would be found to be zayimin we can't punish them so therefore it would be edus shiata yachal hazim which makes them automatically disqualified for testimony. So it's an interesting two answers. Why this would be a good question, a good dirshu question. Why katanim are pot, why katan is pot, is is posleidos, either from a xerasakosov or because it's edushet al hasim. So when it says one second, you want to learn out a kavachem from a woman. So So maybe since he's royal amila, unlike women, obviously. So therefore, maybe he is allowed to testify. Katan yechiach. She used to be meal or pasul edus, but a katan is also pasul edus, even though obviously he had a breast meal at eight days old. Yeah, mal katan she ended with mitzvos. Turn by evet shuv with mitzvos. A katan midaris is not mechuyiv to do any mitzvos. So therefore, at least when it comes to this katan, that this, uh, um, when it comes to the um, to the evet, he does mitzvos kiisha. So he isha to yechiach. She used to mitzvos pasul edus. So the chazud din. Or is that, or is that, or is that, or is that? We don't find the reason why uh, one connection to the next, because we find there is uh, by a woman she's mechayiv in mitzvos, and we find by a boy, a little boy, he's chayiv in, in having a bris milah done. But we see that one is not the reason to make them kashul edus. They're both pasul edus. So Sada Shoshem and Shekhin in Bakal Mitzvah, they don't do all the Mitzvah Spul Lahayid. And therefore Afani Avias Avich in Bakal Mitzvah was Lahayid. So we're going to have to do a Sada that an Evan Kanani doesn't testify. So Malas Sada Shoshem and Shekhin in Ish. So maybe the reason, the, the difference between uh, an Evan Kanani as opposed to everyone else is he's not a man. So what do you mean who's a man? Who cares if he's a man? What does that mean? So Rashi, again, reminds us, Vulukar in Bahushnei Anoshim. It was the whole pasuk, as we said, the miut is because it says anoshim vol anoshim anoshim vol katanim. But maybe, in fact, an evi kanaini who's a, who's a he's a man, so therefore maybe he is able to do uh, testify. 
So Taimir Be'eved Shehu Be'it Shehu Ish. So maybe he could give testimony. So Ella Tasi Megazel. So rather we're going to allow from Megazel, who is allowed to come into Kalashem. You may not want to marry the guy as a Gazel, but he technically is allowed to marry Kalashem. But he's Pasul Edus, as the Pasuk says, Al Tashis Yodcha. So he's not allowed to be a witness. So what can we learn from the Gazlin? So Malik Gazlin, Shechen Masav, Garmuloi. Yeah, but when a Gazlin, it's his actions that caused him to not be able to testify. That's what, he's like a, a wicked person. Turn me Evan Shein Masav Garmuloi. He's an Evan Kanaini. It's not his fault that he became an Evan Kanaini. So maybe he could testify. Now it takes him a Gazlin Machad Mahanach. Rather, learn out from a Gazlin and from one of the other two, either a woman or a Katam. Mar, and therefore that's going to be. The answer. So, Marbu Radio Rabino Aymer Amar Kral, the Pasuk says, Lu Yumsu Avos Albanim. So, what do we learn out from this Pasuk that we do not kill Avos Albanim? Lu Yumsu Alpi Avos in Lahem Chayes Banim. That you do not sentence to death um, a person who does not have Chayes Banim, who is not Shaykh to um, any connection to their children, which again is how we saw in Tosus also. That their children, they're not considered like halakhically, they're their children biologically, but they have no yichus, they have no pedigree, they have no family tree, if you will, as an Evan Kanaini. So, therefore, that is the reason. So, even though t- technically you can maybe learn out from a Sada Shava, the truth is you can, um, you have a second answer, it's another possibility because it's Xeris Akosov. The Pustic says it has to be someone who is Albanim, someone who's Shaykh to be called. Children. The Yisak Adada Chid Amr, and if you want to tell me before, Lo Yimso Abos Al Banim Beedus Banim. If we're talking about testimony, Lift the Rachman Lo Yimso Abos Al Benehem. My Banim Shemamina Lo Yimso Al Pi Abos She Inlehem Chayes Banim. So they, based on again the Drasha of the learning of the pasuk, that's what we're coming to learn. Question thirteen. Elu Psuli Edus Nil Nil Madim Min a pasuk Lo Yimso Abos Al Banim. So. Well, as we just saw, when it comes to an Eved, and also it's going to be a Karov, a relative. Okay. Elamiyata, who banim liyum so avoy, el avoyis, ha chanami, the liyum so alpi banim, shein lehem chayis avoyis. Is it, we're also saying that it's talking about someone who doesn't have shaykh as a connection to the father. El le ger, ha chanami, the apostle edos. That sounds like, therefore, because a ger, his children are his children. But a ger, his parents, halakhically, of course, they're still his parents biologically, but halakhically, those are not his parents. So therefore, you're going to tell me, because of that same drasha, but looking at the other way around, that therefore a ger cannot give edus, which was not true. We know that a ger is not possible edus. So I'm going to be one second. Can't compare the two. Ger, nehi de'en lo chayas l'ma'ala, l'mati yeish lo chayas. It's true. Granted, above he doesn't have chayas because he disconnected himself from his parents' religion. So therefore, they're not like halachically parents. However, when it comes to his children, he still does. They're considered halachically his children. When it comes to an, an evid kanaini, he has nothing top or bottom. There's no way you would even think. How could you think that a ger is possible in this? Because if so, as we said before, we'd be able to learn out two things that way. First of all, we could learn So therefore, it would have ended up teaching us that since they don't have chayas avos, then a ger would talk to him be pasul edus. The eved nafgale. How about an eved? How about an eved kanani? Then you can just simply learn out kavachaymer miger. If we already know that a ger, which is not true, but if it's true that you would be able to learn out the pasuk to tell you that a ger tach is pasul edus, so then it would be a kavachaymer. Then obviously an eved kanani is going to be pasul edus. Why? Because my ger the lamalu who de'in lochais kavol mata yeshul chais nonetheless is pasul edus. So even though there is some element of a connection to a family member, namely below his children, still their pasuleidus. So an evet she'en lo chayes lo mal lo mate and udin she'en pasuleidus. So you wouldn't even need a pasuk to tell you to need to tell you 
that an Evan Kanaini is is considered to be Pasolatus. Obviously, if a Gare is going to be Pasolatus, certainly an Evan Kanaini will be. You won't even need a Pasolatus for that. Elam in the Kasim Rachmana. Therefore, the fact that the Pasolatus does say Luyumso Avos Al Bnei Abanim, the Mashmul Luyumso Al Pi Avos Shein Lehem Chayes Banim, it's coming to tell you Dafka in a situation where you have someone who does not have even a connection to his children, which is an Eved. Shmami not Eved Shein Lo Chayes Lo Mal Lo Maata Who the Pasolatus Only him of a Gare. Since he does have uh, edus, he has chayes below to his kids, kashal edus. So therefore, ger certainly is kashal edus, but not every kanaini. So lamuli the kasim rachmanu banim lo yimsu al vois the mashmul yimsu al pi banim shein lehem chayes al vois. So I did the kasim lo yimsu al vois al banim kasim nami al banim lo yimsu al vois. So the, you can't ask a question about the entirety of the Pasuk because sometimes the Pasuk will contrast the language to be able to counter what was said in the beginning part of the Pasuk. And therefore, that's not something in which it would be a kasha at all. And therefore, maskana. When it comes to a ger, as we understand, because there's chayas banim, so therefore certainly the din is their kashal edus. However, when it comes to an evi kanani, he's going to be pasal edus. He's going to be pasal edus. Either because we learn out from this Xeris Akasav, you can learn out from a, a, a Sat HaShava. Um, however, when, and of course, a Gazan's Apostle Adas, an Isha's Apostle Adas, a Kotan's Apostle Adas, and we end up having this, this dispute whether or not an Evan Kanani, if you hit an Evan Kanani Shel Chayarim, whether or not there's a Din Boshas. So you have to pay everything, or, or excluding Boshas, not according to Yehuda. And it's the question of the word Achva, is that brother, is he, is that an exclusion because an Evan Kanani has lack of Chayas? Or do we say that, it, according to Rabbanan, you are Chay Boishas because he's Chay Ben Mitzvah's Keisha? Okay. So then the Mishnah said that if you encounter a Cherish of the it's a bad encountering. Because if you hurt them, you're going to be Chayim, but if they hurt you, you're going to be pot, they're going to be Potter. So Ima the Rav Shmuel Bar Abba Mehagrainya. So the mother of Rav Shmuel Bar Abba from this location, Havas Nitziva Leil Rav Abba. So she uh, was married to this. Uh, person to to Rav to uh, to Rav Abba, Kesavtinhu and Nixe, and the possessions were written Rav Shmuel Bar Abba Bra. That her the possessions were written to Shmuel Rav Shmuel Bar Abba, who happened to be her son. So it's an interesting thing. She's married, and therefore you would think maybe if she would die, that her uh, her husband would be entitled to be able to get. Uh, her nixe malug, and not uh, her son. So Buster de Shriva, after she died, as we continue to pay chesam and bays, uh, it says that also Rav Shmuel Bar Abba kamei Rav Yirmiyah. Now again, Rav Shmuel Bar Abba is the one who is her son, and therefore uh, he, based on the documentation, if you will, was anticipating that he was going to be able to be Yerush. So he went in front of Rabbi Yirmiyah Barabba and Ukme ben Nixay. And based on what we've said, he was able to get her Nixay Malug. Then also Rav Abba, and Rav Abba again it was her husband, then went, uh, went and Amr Lamil Sakame de Rav Hoishia. So and he said this matter into Rav Hoishia. Also Rav Hoishia, so Rav Hoishia went, Amr Kame de Rav Yehud, and it was said in front of Rav Yehud, Amr Lay. If you have a woman who sells her nixi malug in her husband's lifetime, which is kind of what happened, she gave over her nixi malug to her son, Umesa, and then she dies, Habal So the din is that the husband is able to take, uh, even though it was sold to the loikeach, to the buyer, the Baal is able to get it back upon her her passing. So says Rashi, why? Shahabal Yarshas Ishto. Because the husband is the one who is Yarsh from his wife. Rishon. And therefore it's as though he's the first Lakeach. And therefore, because of that, perhaps in fact, uh, the husband should be the one. Rav Abba should be the one who's entitled to be able to receive uh, this uh, this uh, land. 
So Amrua Kameda Rabbi Yirmiya Baraba, Armalhu Ana Masnisi Adan. He said, I know a Masnisa. I know a, a, a Sugya, a Mishnah literally, as we'll see in a second. So again, he went to Rav Yirmiya Bar Abba, right? Rav Yirmi, and it was Rav Yirmiya Bar Abba that gave it to the son. But the question is, why did he give it to the son? Don't we hold that the husband should be able to get it? And he's Moitzimiyad Lukuchos. So how could it be that Rav Yirmiya Bar Abba gave it to the son? So he says, I'll tell you, it's because Masnisa, Ana uh, Masnisi Adan. And I'll quote it, why the son should have gotten it. Not. Hakaisim Nechasev Lif Noi. A person who gives his possessions to his son, la'achor ma'isai, after the dying, says Rashi. What does that mean? So can Rashi. Mehayoyim la'achor ma'isai. From today and after I die. Shaguf kanoi laben mehayoyim. So basically what you're saying is that the guf akarka belongs to my son today. He's going to get the land already now. So what was being said was, you will eventually, you already own the land. However, as I, the father, am still alive, I want to be able to enjoy and eat the peros of that land. And therefore, I'm entitled to continue to eat the peros the enti- my entire lifetime. And, however, even though technically I've gifted you or given you the land. So again, So again, Obviously, the son is not able to sell it, even though technically the land is his, because it belongs on some level to the father, because the father is entitled to the peros. But at the same time, the father can't sell, because he gave it over to his son. The, fa- the son actually now owns technically the land. But because each one of them has a right, the son to the land, and the father to the peros, so therefore, for that reason, neither of them is, are able to sell it at this point. However, if let's say he does sell, Machar Av, now the father who only really had rights to the fruits, he did sell. He wasn't supposed to do so. The question is, what does that mean? The din is, Machurin Ad Shiyamus. This is actually a sale, and the Lekeach um, is able to eat the peros until the father dies. However, when the father dies, then the son can go and take it from the Lukuchos. Because the whole point was, technically, the father, really all he did was uh, sell his rights. His remaining rights were the Peros. So therefore, the Lokeach, who bought the land, is able to eat the Peros because it would have gone to the, the father was going to eat the Peros. So instead, now the Lokeach is going to eat the Peros. That much is allowed. However, once the father dies, then the son is able to get it back. Mokhar Haben, let's say... Again, the son who only had the karka, but he didn't have rights to the, to the fruit. If the son did sell it, So because the father still has rights to eat those fruits, those father, the father can still eat the fruits, even though it's in the lokech's hands. So therefore, for that reason, the lokech cannot eat the fruits. But of course, after the father dies, then everything belongs to the son, and the son sold it to this guy. So therefore, once the father dies, then the lokech gets to keep it. He may, so it explains. He mayas av that when the father in fact does die, mia isle loikeach. We see that it does go to the loikeach. So what do we see from here? We see that clearly there is a connection to the son, right? And therefore, for that reason, that's the reason why I gave it to him. Says Rav Yirmiyah Bar Abba. And even though it's true, technically, norm in a normal circumstance. We would say that if uh, a, a woman sells her property so that the husband is able to take it from the Lukuchos. However, this is a different situation in which the father had rights to the Peros, the son had rights to the land. And then the, in, the, in this situation, we see that the son who sold it, he's the one who has control over it. So therefore, we see it was actually a good sale. And therefore, maybe we should say the same thing when it comes to Rav Shmuel Bar Abba. So, V'yafa gav de Mesa ben, so the Gemara continues, V'yafa gav de Mesa ben, b'chai av, even though the son, if the son would die while the father was still alive, d'lo asli de haben, that it would never have gotten to the son's hands because uh, it was always the father's, k'rav shimim ben lakish, d'yemer lo shna 
Mesa ben b'chayav, deloy osu liyadiyah ben. Doesn't matter if, let's say, the son dies before the father, or lo shna mesa av b'chayav ben, or the father dies while the son is still alive. Yosu liyadiyah ben, and it goes to the son's hands. It doesn't make any difference. Kanalei kech. So he's saying that there's no distinction. In either situation, the din is that it's the the loy kech is kaina. It doesn't matter if the father, they're both dead now, the father and the son. It doesn't matter if the father died before the son and the son died before the father, even though it would be the case where the, fa- the son died first, in which technically it was never in the hands of the Ben, so therefore you would think maybe it wasn't a good sale, it's still a good sale. Didmar, and the question just keeps going. Didmar, Makar haben mechaya av. If let's say the son sells in the father's lifetime, in which maybe at some point the son was going to be Yerush, but right now he really didn't have a right to sell it because it doesn't completely belong to the son. Omesa ben and the son died before the father died, which means it was never really in the hands of the son. The son may have right, had rights to the land, but not the rights to the peros. So here we have the famous machlokas. Rabbi Yochanan amir loy kano loy keach, Rabbi Yochanan amir kano loy keach. Rabbi Yochanan amir loy kano loy keach, amir loch kin katani mastisin. So he says, it's not a good Kenyan. Because Armel Kikatani Mastis in Machar Haben Loi Kana Loi Keach, it says that if the son sells it, it's not a good Kenyan, Ad Shiyamos Av until the father dies. Vachimes Av, when the father dies, Is Loi Keach, when is that? That's only in a case, Dulo Mes Haben Machaya Av, if the son was still alive. He didn't die while the father was still alive. Dios Loi Haben, which means that the son, because the father died before the son, so the son eventually was Yarishit. And therefore, that's the reason why the Loi Keach gets it. Of a Mes Haben Machaya Av, if let's say a situation is reversed, where the son dies before the father, in which it was never in the hands of the son, so in that case, when the father dies, it does not go to the lekeach. What do we see? According to the Shita, uh, Rav Yochanan holds, and this is the famous line, that the ownership of the fruit is, on, is comparable, connected to the land. Therefore, the zavin loved the day zavin. Therefore, when the son sold it, it wasn't his. Since the son only had rights, as we said, to um, to the to the karka and not the peros. So be that way around. Okay, I wrote it wrong. I think to the karka and not the peros, as we said. Uh, so if he sells it, it isn't good if he dies first, right? Because the Kenyan peros, right? The Kenyan peros that the father owns is Kenyan Haguf. So it's like, even though it's true that the, the son has Kenyan Haguf, but it doesn't make any difference because the son really doesn't own it because the father's Kenyan of the Peros, he has the right to the fruits as long as the law, that was the stipulation, is Kenyan Haguf. And therefore, the, the son definitely had no right to sell it. And therefore, if it happened to be that the son died before the father, there was never a sale at all. Rav Shimon Melakash Emer Kano Loikeach. It's actually a Kenyan because Kikatan Amas Nitzam Machar Haben Eno Loikeach Hashiyamos Av that it's not going to be a Kenyan until the father dies. Kimayis Av Mias. Nonetheless, when he does die, Is Loikeach. And according to Rish Lakish, Loshna Loshna doesn't matter. Lo Mesa Ben Machaya Av doesn't matter if let's say the son outlived the father. Do Yosuli De Haben went to the to the son's hands after the father died. Voshna Mesa Ben Mechayav the Lo Yosuli Yade De Ben Kanol Kech so it's a good Kenyan. Al Maksaver Kenyan Paris Lav Ki Kenyan Guf Dami. According to Rish Lakish, it's not a Kenyan Kenyan Paris is not Ki Kenyan Guf, and therefore the fact that the father had a right to the Peros does not mean he has full rights of everything because the son has rights to the to the Karka. That was the deal. And therefore, the the selling of the land was actually a kenyan, because right? The son correctly sold that which was his. Now we we hold that all these opinions hold like the sheet of Reish Lakish. Who's Reish Lakish? And Reish Lakish says it doesn't make any difference. It's always a good kenyan, even if the son dies before the father. We come Rav Yirmi Bar Abba, Rav Yirmi Bar Abba, who again was the one. If you going all the way to the top of the stop, is the one that get, gave it to the son and not to the hus, not to the father or the husband. Come Rav Yirmi Bar Abba, Ki Isala Daita Kenyan Paris Kenyan the Guf Dami. If you want to hold that Paris is like the Guf, so Ki Mais Av, and when the father dies, Mesa Ben the son dies, Bechay Av in the father's lifetime. 
My Isli Lakech. Why would the Lakech get anything? Kikozavin Hai, when he sold it, loved the Kozavin. He had no rights to sell it. Why did he have no rights to sell it? Because it belonged to the father, because the father had rights to the Peros. El Lav Shemami Nog, Kinin Peros, Lav Kinin Gufdami. So to here by Niximalug, because this is talking about a case of Niximalug. One, uh, so what's Niximalug? So the Niximalug are to the husband, so when she gifted it to her son, she had the Kinin Haguf. And in other words, when it comes to when it comes to Niximalug that she brings into the marriage, it's her land and the husband eats the Peros. So it's much the same thing as we were talking about. So when the, when the wife gave over to her son the land, it's the same thing. Did she have the ability? And the son is like the Lokeach. So if you hold like Reish Lakish, that Kinyan Peros Lav Kinyan Guftami, that means that the son, it was actually a good good sale. And therefore it goes to the, it goes to the son. And therefore that's the reason why it should go to him. So therefore, she had the right to give this gift, and it goes to the son, not the husband. So that's the the svar behind all of this. Okay. Elav shmami no kinyan peros lav kinyan guf dami. So had rule came to Rabbi Yirmiya. So they re- responded and said this all back to to him. On uh, armalhu hachi amr shmul zu enu daimul mishasenu. Now you can't compare this to our Mishnah, even though it sounds similar because. Our case, our case of our Mishnah is a woman gifting the karka to her son, and we were talking about the father saying to the son, "You know what? You can keep the. You, I'm gifting you the land, and I'm going to keep the peros." So it's not really the same thing. Why not? So he says like this: My time is Elmer Rav Yosef Bishlama Itan Ivcha. It would have said it the other way around. Hakaisim Nachasav Aviv that he wrote his, the possessions to the father. Um, Namely, that the father had right to the lands. So, Then you can actually learn out this drush. What ended up happening was she gave it to her son. She gave the land to her son. Maybe the reason why is not because and and therefore she had a right to give the sell the king and guf. Maybe it's because the son is Roy to inherit. So that's that's how is it how we're explaining it. So look in okay. So Amrule so that that's how we're ex- explaining. So basically we're saying no. Only in that case, because the son would be a Yarish from the father. Right? Maybe only in that case, when it comes to the father to the son, the son was going to be the Yarish completely. So maybe that's the reason why we'll say Kinin Aguf in that situation. So therefore, it's like the son has certain rights because he's going to be Yorish it anyway. So it's clearly he was giving his son rights to sell it now since he'll be Yorishing it anyway. Mashkin in our case, where it really should be going to the husband. That's the shot. So that's why we can't compare it. Because, again, when it says the royal by the by the case of by the case of the father and the son, so in that situation, by the case of the father and son, so that's when the son is going to be the Yarsh. However, in this case, the husband should be the one who's the Yarsh. So you can't you can't learn out from that. So I'm going to lay a to what? Bra Yaris Abba Abba Lo Yaris Bra. Are you telling me that a son inherits from the father, but we can't find a case where the, fa- the father is not going to be able to be Yarsh from the son? In other words, it says Rashi, Vi Havi Tani Nami Imcha. You could still say the same thing because if they're, only, they're the only two people that are related to one another and if the son dies, the father's going to be Yarish as well. El, uh, what do we learn out from here? He's chasing uh, away the chasim from the son. Ka'asi. So hachinami l'avruchinhu l'nixim miachua asi. So says Rashi, when a person's writing his possessions to his son, probably he has another son. If he's the only child, then what's the whole point? You know it's going to go to this one kid. You only have one son. Must be he has another kid. 
He's basically trying to chase away or distance uh, this one from the other ones. The fact that it says that the Lekech is Kaina, Shmamina Kinyan Paris, Lavki Kinyan Guf Dami. So we can actually learn out from here that a Kinyan Paris is not Kinyan Guf. Because again, since the son only has rights to the kin, to the Karka, but the father has rights to the Paros, so in this situation, uh, we can again derive from here the, the notion that Kinyan Paris Lavki Kinyan Guf Dami, and therefore, even though the father has rights to the Paros, the, fa- the son had the right to, 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 to do so, even though maybe he does have other uh, children. That potentially could have been Yarish. So it's not just he would be Yarish. He may not have necessarily been the only one who's Yarish. So there's the famous Takan of Usha. says Rashi. Even though it's true, Paris is not connected to Karka. And therefore, since Paris is not connected to Karka, even though, so you would think, so therefore, the, if, if that's the case, since the son got the karka, so um, it was a good sale. It was a, it was a good gifting to the son. And the hu- father has nothing, can't do anything about it. The husband can't do anything about it, I should say. Because ki- his Kenyan of Paris is not Kenyan of Guf. But Baal, B'nechsi Ishto, Al Muha Rabban and Shibu Demishum Eva. V'havi Kalei Kech Rishon. This is doesn't make any difference. You can't say king of Paris is lav king and guf dami. Therefore, it should go to the son because of tekanas usha. They, we said that the husband has rights of being like the first holy keach, and therefore it should in fact go to to him. Amr of idi barav and afan amen of tenina. We also have that which to support this. Me don't be ishpoini shigirisish ishdai. I testifying about the person he divorced his wife. Vanosan ksubasa and he gave us ksubas. So we continue to pay testimony to Allah. Bari he tachtav. And we see that they are still together, uh, even though they were divorced and everything. Um is shamashtoi, and uh, she is serving him. Um, basically, what they were trying to do was trying to get her to lose her ksuba. So now they are zaymimin, v'nimsu zaymimin. So the question is, what goes on? So in Aymrim Yishal Medical Ksubasa, we don't say that she has to pay they have to pay for her entire Ksuba. They only uh, need to pay for uh, her for some of the value of the Ksuba as she had Tovas Hana. Oh Tovas Hana Ksubasa. So is it Tovas Hana Hanas Ksubasa? So Oymdin, this is a, a pretty hard Gemar and Makos Gimel very tiny, very hard. Oymdin, we evaluate Kama Adam Rights Elitinx Ksubasa Shilzu. How much person would want to give this ksuba? Shim this armal and this garshal. You would basically sell the rights, almost like an option, that if she gets divorced or widowed, the imesa, but if she dies, you're shenabala. The husband would, would get it, and therefore this guy would lose out. So it's like, uh, it's like uh, it, you're taking a risk by buying her ksuba, right? So therefore the ksuba is not necessarily 100% because there's a, not a guarantee it may not happen. Now, v'yisavadartach, so let's look in look in Rashi. Lefikach in army Mishal Menu La Ksubasa. We don't say that he have to pay the whole Ksuba. No Oymin Kama Adam Rites Alitin La Miyad Be Ksubasa Al Hasafik because it's a doubt. Shem Nisar Melon Neskar She Then he'll have to pay her. Vim Tomas if she dies, then the husband gets, and therefore the guy's going to lose out. So therefore you don't pay the whole thing. Now Vishach Ataytach Leisel Takana Suusha. If you want to tell me there's no Takana Suusha, namely that when she sells something. It, the husband has full rights to take it back. What is this case that if she dies, that the husband gets the ksuba? Maybe she will sell this ksuba and the husband can't get it. So this is proof there is a takana that the husband will, in fact, get it back. So therefore, um, the din is that um, there is a concept of nixe molo. Okay, we're going to stop there. It continues a little bit more. Kind of feel felt a little bit like we're wearing some ksubas. Um, question fourteen. A kaisa nechasim live night. So you wrote all your nechasim to your son. Liachem ayisai machar haben. Then the son sold it. In lokech ad shiyamos av. So he said that the lokech uh, doesn't get it until the father dies because the father had because since the father had rights uh, to the peros, 
So therefore, once the father died, so therefore the never the lekach is fine. So man din l'achar misa sa'ab. What happens after the misa? It says ad shem sa'ab. So the lekach doesn't have it. But once the father dies, uh, what happens? So it says like this: mei sa'ab bechayeh ben kan lekach. If let's say the father died while the son was still alive, certainly it was a good kenyan. Because the fa- the son was Yarish, and therefore it's a good Kenyan. Mesa ben b'chaya av. If let's say the son died first, where it never came into the son's hands, it's a machlokas reishal because Rabbi Yochanan, and it's totally whether you hold Kenyan Paris is kekenyan kaguf dami. So that is the uh, difference. Okay, that was question fourteen. T A sixteen. Mahamaker shul Rabbi Yehuda she'en lavadim boishas. So how do we know? I got this completely wrong. That avadim do not have a right to boishas. So as we said, ki nasa nashim yachtav ish the achiv. So mi sheishlo achva yatsa eved sheinlo achva. It's a pretty clean, straightforward question. I'm surprised I got that wrong, but that's T A um, sixteen. So let's just mark this down over here. My time to Rabbi Huda Omer Kra ki nasa anashim yachtav ish the achiv. So we need to achva yotzes eved shein lo achva. Okay, let's see. Seventeen. Ma hasad she avde avde malug yotzim mishen ve'ayin. That's not today. Eil psul edus nilmanim in a pasuk lo yimsu abos albanim. So this actually we had with question thirteen, and here it is on T B seventeen, and the answer is kravim and avadim shein lem chayas. So that is. Um, so I think this is part of it. Okay, I'm not sure if that's answered the question we did before. Rabbi Gibber's test. Um, let's see a couple of their questions. So he says as follows. Um, okay, so Haim Evid Kanani Mikri Ach. So Rehuda says no, since you can't marry into the Kahal. Rabbanan says yes, since he's having mitzvahs. Lafida Rabbanan Me'efa Yalfinan the Evid Kanani Pasal Edus. So either a Roganav, it should maybe say Gazlan, and Mechad Mahanach, they learn Sadashava that they aren't doing all mitzvahs and they're Pasal Edus, so too I'll bring you this Pasal all mitzvahs. Or and I just wrote this in English. The father won't die through the son, meaning the Adis isn't good by someone whose children aren't called his children an Evid or uh, his children, right? So that's actually correct. So you wrote the possessions to your son. The son sold it. That the son died first. Why? Why would it be? Why would it be good? So we said it's according to the shita that holds Kenyan Paris is lavka Kenyan Gulf. Let's see if I wrote it. Kenyan Paris is lavka Kenyan Gulf. I really knew this well, even thirty-five years ago. Therefore, the son who originally was originally allowed to sell the land, even though Paris belonged to the Av, so even if the son dies first, the sale still remains binding. Here this Takanas Usha, which gives the husband the right to get the land back, but there was no Takana for father and son, so they aren't the same, so the husband uh, in our story gets it. Adkan. Okay, so that's the end of the Mishnah.